Perhaps the most well known case to be investigated by Ed and Lorraine Warren was the haunting in Amityville. Lorraine even said that this was the most terrifying case that she had been a part of. Amityville is the story of madness and hauntings that has since been turned into numerous films and documentaries. But there are still details that even the biggest fan might not know. Let's jump into the top 5 scary Amityville horror hidden details. Coming in at number 5, you have Demonic Boy. You might have seen the photo of the Demonic Boy, but did you know that the photo? photo was taken by Ed and Lorraine during the investigation into the Amityville horror. The photo was famous in its own right, with it showing a demon being caught on camera, meaning many did not know that it was from this case. The photo features what appears to be a young boy with white eyes who is peeking out of a doorway. Ed and Lorraine had set up an automatic camera that took infrared pictures to capture the second floor landing during the night. In the morning when they checked through the pictures, they were shocked to see the little boy in the image. This remained a secret until three years later when it was shown to the public. But who could the boy be in this image? It is believed to be John DeFeo, the young boy who died in the home along with the rest of his family. Usually this would just be a guess as you don't usually get a clear photo of a spirit, but if you compare the photo of the ghost boy to a photo of John DeFeo when he was alive, you can see that the spirit has the same features as the young boy. It appears to be bloody and possibly broken, but you can still tell that it is the same. The boy's hair also matches how it was when he was alive. It seems to prove that members of the family chose to stay within the home after they passed away. This could explain why the house is so haunted. Maybe they were trying to warn the Lutz's family not to stay there, or they might meet the same fate. Coming in at number 4 we have the DeFeo's furniture. When the Lutz family bought the house, it still had all of the furniture from the DeFeo's family inside. It all remained untouched since that horrible night. The Lutzes decided to keep all of the furniture so they could move in with it already to live in. The family even slept in the same beds that the DeFeo's passed away in. Ed and Lorraine believed that the presence of the same furniture could be what caused the hauntings. The spirits were upset that there was a new family using their home. The spirits may have been attached to their beds where they had their last moments. This could even explain further into the demonic boy photograph. John DeFeo looked to be in pyjamas peeking out from around his door. His spirit may have been resting in this bedroom when the camera awoke him and he went to investigate the noise when he was caught on camera. When hauntings occur, spirits often have attached themselves to an object, sometimes paintings, mirrors or a creepy doll, so it seems likely that if you keep around the furniture of the family, then at least one member of the family will be attached to the house. This might have caused the Lutz's family to experience nightmares from sleeping in those beds and absorbing the spirit's fearful energy, as well as explaining the other horrors they experienced while living in the home. I don't think I could sleep there or keep any of the furniture if I knew what had happened. Coming in at number 3, they didn't plan to leave. Everyone knows that the Lutz family lived in the house for less than a month, but did you know that on the morning they left for the last time, they had always planned to return. They did not know that they were saying goodbye to their home and belongings forever. George Lutz said in one of his final interviews, I quote, we didn't get up to leave that morning. You need to understand that. This was our house. We lived there. After a night that particularly frightened two of the children, the Lutz had said they had called a priest they had been in contact with throughout the ordeal, who encouraged them to go somewhere else the following night. They had, at that point, not slept through the night for weeks and thought it would be best to stay with family so everyone could rest. Instead, they ended up packing their bags from Kathy's mother's house, leaving the rest of their belongings in the house, and boarding a plane for San Diego. Go. Their belongings ended up later being sold at auction. They did not want to leave their home, but they were told that they had to. Once Ed and Lorraine were told about the events and were brought in to uncover the truth, they warned them that they could never return to the home for the sake of their family's safety. Apparently, if they had stayed much longer, their fate could have been the same as the DeFeos. The same spirit still plagued the house, and they might not have been able to fight them much longer with them struggling to sleep, eat, and function to the best of their ability. Coming in at number two, the DeFeos were all found in the same position. Although there are some who don't believe Ronald DeFeo Jr. was possessed, there are a number of things about that night that don't make any logical sense without the possible hauntings being involved. The first thing that seems like a satanic ritual is that every family member was found in the exact same position. The whole thing only lasted for around 15 minutes. So would Ronald DeFeo Jr. have had time to stage the bodies in the same position on each of their beds? Maybe or maybe not. This was something that the spirits within the house did once the act had been done. The police also determined that the rifle hadn't been fitted with a silencer, meaning that after one shot had gone off, the other members of the family should have been alerted to the attack. However, there was no sign of a struggle, nor was there any evidence that sedatives had been used to knock the victims out or keep them quiet. 
All of which is incredibly weird. So why did no one hear the shots? It seems there is no explanation for this. The only reason anyone was alerted to what happened was the family dog. He alerted the neighbours who called the police. Whether you believe in the paranormal or not, the details of this case are undoubtedly strange. Ed and Lorraine believe there was a great evil within the home. They said they had never been so scared by a case. They commented on how powerful the spirits within the house were. They even followed them home after their investigation. And finally coming in at number 1 we have Second Killer. There might have been a second killer who was never caught, but there might not have been. At this time, police and investigators considered the fact that more than one person may have been responsible for the attacks. It was the only way they could make sense of some of the more puzzling aspects of the crime scene. The existence of a second culprit has never been proven, although a documentary filmmaker claimed in 2012 that he had found new evidence supporting the theory. Katzenbach is working on his third documentary about the murders. He insists that he has the documents and the evidence to prove that there was more than one person responsible for the murders. How could a person walk through a three story Dutch colonial and shoot six different victims on two separate levels and no one get out of bed? No one put up a struggle, said Katzenbach. Other details about the case taken together add up to a second gun and a second shooter. Evidence like a photograph of a pillowcase found in a trash can next to the canal, along with a gun found at the bottom of the canal. The police were not convinced that there was enough evidence since Ronald DeFeo Jr. confessed to the case. It was a simple open and shut case and he was convicted. Whether he did say the voices told him to do it. Could it be possible that he did have help? That the evidence isn't there for the police as the help was from an entity rather than a person? The entity would not have left fingerprints or evidence of any kind, but the simple fact that things have never added up make it extremely likely. Ed and Lorraine's findings within the house would also support this. They noted that there were a number of violent powerful entities within the home, powerful enough to attach themselves to Ronald DeFeo Jr and help him with his crimes. Well there we have it, do you guys agree with our list? Which hidden detail shocked you the most? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below and perhaps we can do a part 2. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top 5 scary witches you should never summon, part 3. Scully Cat said the scariest witch I tangled with was my ex-wife. I barely escaped. Savage. Felt that burn. But I feel like the comments are all going to be the same. I feel like a lot of people are going to be throwing their exes under the bus here. Joseph Polria said, I love the endings of your vids showing the outtakes. Pretty scary. Are the outtakes scary or is pretty scary a separate comment? Doesn't really make sense. But if I'm in it, it's probably scary. Tomantula said, Hope you're doing okay, Lucy. Love and hugs. Thank you. I accept the love. I don't always accept the hug, but I appreciate it. Going to New York soon to party, so I'm feeling pretty good. Abstra Kavoti said, The hot host of this video is a witch. A good witch. I like that. Am I a good witch though? Or am I a bad witch? Have I been naughty? <laughs> <laughs> Chris gave it a like. Well done. Producer Chris enjoyed that comment. Liam Evans said, Part four, please. Okay, I love you want part four. We'll see. I'll try and make it happen, but you just need to all watch this. You need to all watch part 3 in order for me to give you a part 4. You need to deserve it. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you later. The photo is famous in its own right for the fact... The photo is famous in its own right due to it being a demon... For the fact of a demon... But if you compare the photo of the captures... But if you compare the photo... But if you compare the photo to the... <sighs> Coming in at number two, we have the DeFeos were all found in the same position. Although there are some who don't believe DeFeo was... Ronald DeFeo... Ronald De. What's his name? Ronald DeFeo Jr.? One sec. Ronald... Is it Ronald? Ronald DeFeo... It is. It's because she hadn't heard of this. She was like, what's the Amityville horror? I was like, what? She was, yeah, and I was like, have you seen The Conjuring? She was like, just the first. I was like, have you seen Jaws? She was like, nope. I was like, what the f was like, Jaws doesn't relate, but like, I was like, I was just naming movies. <laughs> just, oh, you can pull them up there. That would be sick. Bless, bless. I am in. Um, not that one. I think I'm in Scary Witches You Shouldn't Summon, part 
Part three? Yeah, that one. Seems like a me vid. Oh, shadow! There you go. Nice. Good ad, good ad. Okay. Um, 